The abyssal waters of Baja's Sea of Cortez cloak a hidden killer. And they could definitely take you down, drown you, and eat you. Probably would. Locals fear this creature more than sharks and tell tales of horrific attacks. They talk of a creature with incredible cunning that can grow seven feet in one year and has 36,000 razor sharp teeth. Even scuba divers have been attacked. Some testify that this animal is a killer. They don't care if you're alive or dead, they're just going to eat. And they will, in fact, take a human life. But others question the validity of these attacks. They seem to be a lot more curious, intelligent, and uh, very docile, actually. If you fight with them, they'll fight back. But if you are kind to them, they are very kind to you. I realize there's a lot more to them now than their, just their aggressive behavior. We know so little about them. What caused these attacks? What is the truth behind the mystery of this real-life sea monster? Rafael Sanchez has fished the waters of the Sea of Cortez by Mexico's Baja Peninsula all his life. Several years ago, he headed off to begin a normal night's work. But out at sea, his boat engine failed, leaving him stranded and alone on the black ocean. Rafael's only hope of getting home was to dive in and swim towards another fishing boat for spares. I was swimming alone and they attacked me. One stuck to me and then another. Look, see where they ripped bits out of me. Suddenly he felt himself dragged underwater by sharp teeth-ringed tentacles. Dozens of bites began to pierce his flesh. These are all little bites. I covered myself with one hand and started swimming with the other. The attackers were a pack of Humboldt squid. One was on my back. It ripped out the biggest part. Somehow, Rafael escaped to add his terrifying story to a growing list of evidence that these waters are home to man-eating squid. But what's the truth behind these attacks, these tales of giant sea monsters? Can we separate reality from myth? A team of experienced divers and filmmakers is about to find out as they prepare to dive with the killer squid. Jackie Cousins is no stranger to danger. She has dived with these animals on previous expeditions to Baja and experienced their hostile behavior firsthand. And all these squid were just all over me, just attacking me from every angle. And I thought, well, this is really true. They really are as aggressive as everybody says. Mike Degree is a highly regarded underwater filmmaker and well-known biologist who specializes in cephalopods like squid and octopus. But here's an opportunity to have an animal that I consider the pinnacle of invertebrate evolution. They're brilliant, they are clever. I have seen cephalopods do things that blow my mind, things that many vertebrates couldn't possibly do. Together, Mike and Jackie have the underwater skills and scientific knowledge to get to the bottom of the stories of man-eating squid. While some question the truth of these attacks, others will testify that the Humboldt lives up to its deadly reputation. If you were to fall in the water with these things, you have a very high probability of being eaten alive. Scott Cassell dived with the U.S. Special Forces, and he spent more time in the water with Humboldts than anyone else. Adding Scott's experiences to the stories told by local fishermen, Mike and Jackie plan their quest. To fathom the truth, they must prepare to dive into the Sea of Cortez and meet the Humboldts face to face. So what kind of creatures are they up against? Like octopus, squid are cephalopods, which literally means head foot, an apt description. Much about them is unique. They may belong to the same family as slugs and snails, but they're much more sophisticated. 
Humboldt squid spend most of their time in pitch black depths, far below the range of divers, so we still know very little about them. What we do know mainly comes from studying other types of squid. Most adult squid are about a foot in length, though some are as small as an inch. A full-grown Humboldt is up to seven feet long. Only the 16-foot giant squid is larger. The Humboldt squid is a well-designed predator. The huge beak is like a parrot's, powerful enough to tear big chunks of flesh. Squid are predators, okay? Now, you take a one-foot squid and you get a six-inch fish, goodbye, it's history, okay? They have eight arms and two prehensile tentacles that lash out, nail things, bring it in with sucker discs, and in this case, hooks on the sucker disc, bring it in and eat it. Now, you take a six-foot squid. Now that's a serious animal. And they're strong, up to 140 pounds of solid muscle. Because they live in the dark ocean depths, squid have incredible eyesight. The large eyes and polarized vision are amongst the most advanced in nature, way ahead of ours. They can communicate by changing skin color. It's thought that red means anger. And if the statistics aren't intimidating enough, these formidable predators are surprisingly smart, much more intelligent than sharks, and feared more by locals. I wasn't afraid of any creature in the sea, not even sharks, but now I am afraid. You put sharks against squid, Two incredibly successful predators, been around for a long time, evolved a lot of weapons. Obviously, both are extremely good at what they do, but pound for pound, you put a shark against a Humboldt squid, and I'm gonna vote for the Humboldt squid. That's where my money would go. Humboldt squid live mostly in the Sea of Cortez, a large body of water next to Baja, off the coast of Mexico. On the seabed, there's a narrow but extremely deep gulf, part of the San Andreas Fault. 53 desert islands ringed by coral reefs are scattered around the abyss. And this is where Mike and Jackie are planning to dive. Each summer, hundreds of thousands of Humboldts gather in the deep underwater canyons that lie just offshore. No one knows why. It's a pitch black, oxygen depleted world. They only surface at dusk when it's time to feed, and this means trouble, for it's then that they encounter humans. Several years ago, Scott Cassell became hooked on scare stories about the Humboldt squid. I overheard two Mexican fishermen talking about uh, an animal that they catch, but they were talking about it more as a monster. They were talking about the Diablo Rojo, the red demons. And uh, they were talking about if you were to fall in the water with these things, you have a very high probability of being eaten alive. And that intrigued me. And I went home and found out the legend of the Diablo Rojo is based on a real animal. The real animal happens to be the Humboldt squid. But it's not just fishermen's tales that feed this squid's deadly reputation. In 1990, Alex Kerstich was helping to film Humboldt's for a natural history documentary when suddenly one turned on him. of the attack were published. Humboldt squid attacking humans was now more than a rumor. It was scientific fact. Because of the reported attacks by Humboldt's, few divers were willing to get in the water with these killers. But several years ago, Jackie Cousins joined forces with Scott Cassell. I first heard about Humboldt squid from Scott Cassell and um, I was immediately interested and wanted to go diving with them. So we've done lots of 
filming expeditions where we would go underneath the fishing fleet and film the squid there. Now I'm really keen to go and do something different. After working with Scott for several years, Jackie suspected that there was more to these supposed man-eaters than mindless aggression, which is why she has now teamed up with squid biologist Mike Degree. Jackie's been here a lot of times and dived with them often, so it's wonderful for me to come here with her and experience this with someone who's been in the water with really big squid a lot more than I have. Mike and Jackie form a dive team that combines experience and expertise. But will that be enough to shed new light on the elusive squid? The reason Humboldt squid are so mysterious is because they can live at depths of more than 2,000 feet, far beyond the range of divers. In order to investigate just what the squid are up to down there, Mike and Jackie plan their first dive trip. They want to watch the squid deep in the gulf where they spend most of their time. As no one knows what they do at these depths, this will be a first for Humboldt squid research. In good weather, the dive boat Mary Lee heads out into the Sea of Cortez. From the bridge, the sea offers no clues to what lies beneath. The Mary Lee's onboard technology reveals what's hidden in over a thousand feet of water. It's located packs of Humboldt squid heading up from the deep. So as far as you're concerned, looking at this, you think the squid right now are about 400 feet, which means they've already started their way up. Oh yeah, they're earlier. We saw them deeper than that. Absolutely. Okay, so it's working. So if we pick the top of that slope, We'll be in a couple of hundred feet of water. You'll be able to anchor? Absolutely. Well, we can anchor at 400 feet of water, no problem. I like it. All right, well, why don't we do this, John? If you could shut down here, I'm going to go update Jackie, and I think she's got the ROV about to go in. The squid are still much deeper than humans can dive, so Mike and Jackie are going to send down a small remote-operated vehicle called Eric. We have a canyon right over here, about 1,200 feet deep, squid everywhere. Really? 800, 600, 800 feet, yeah. Fantastic, so it looks like a good spot. I think so. How Very are you good. doing? I'm doing good, actually. You could just help me out no. with something. Yep. I want to put this lure in the front of Eric. Okay. So if you can hold it between the grippers, then I'll just close those grippers up. Right, they hope the squid okay, will be attracted by Eric's fluorescent lure. So you got it nice and tight? Got it. Perfect. If Eric can locate the squid 600 feet down, it'll be the first ever glimpse of them in their oh, deep sea home. You ready? Here it goes. Eric descends into the gloom, searching for the packs of squid identified by sonar. Humboldt squid come up to hunt fish each night because there's more prey in shallower waters. Like most squid, they live in groups, but Humboldt packs are larger than most. Mike and Jackie hope to capture their ascent with Eric's onboard camera. At 400 feet, Eric's headlights spot the first signs of squid activity. As they suspected, the squid have begun their vertical migration and are traveling in a large pack. But when Eric gets closer, the squid's behavior seems to become more aggressive. Then, a squid damages Eric's onboard camera, leaving everyone in the dark. Mike and Jackie won't learn anything else from this dive. So it does seem that the squid are programmed to attack. But is this so surprising? After all, they're designed to kill. And there's one man who has studied this creature enough to know that Humboldt squid are highly adapted predators. Professor William Gilly of Stanford University's Hopkins Marine Station has worked with squid for over 25 years. From the safety of his lab and from the bodies of dead squid, he has found out more about them than anyone else in the world. 
Scrutinizing them in clinical close-up clearly reveals just what makes this species such an effective killer. Squid, including Humboldt's, probably sense their prey and track it almost entirely visually. They have incredibly good eyes. Uh, they can see under very low light. They're very sensitive. They can see polarized light to even see better than we can underwater. Um, that's an enhancement feature. The Humboldt squid also carries an outstanding arsenal of weapons. The Humboldt squid is a very efficient predator. It's a fish shredding machine that swims its entire life eating fish, eating crustaceans, and growing fast. So uh, it's well equipped to catch food and to devour it and to bite it up into small pieces. When these things feed, they uh, start the process basically by pointing all of their eight arms right towards what they're going to go for. And they open it up a little bit and out will come the long tentacles uh, equipped with sucker cups on the tips. They, this is retractable, it pulls it in, the arms open up nice and wide. All squid's tentacles are lined with sucker cups, but the Humboldt sucker cups are ringed with razor-sharp teeth. This squid has about 1,200 suckers, and each one has up to 30 teeth. That's a total of 36,000 teeth per squid. If a Humboldt embraces you, you're not getting away, as fisherman Juan Rodriguez found out firsthand. <laughs> It wrapped its tentacles around my arms. It was sharp and painful. They gouged out of my flesh. If 36,000 teeth don't finish the prey off, the muscle-bound arms then maneuver the victim towards the mouth to be eviscerated by the squid's massive black beak. Professor Gilly demonstrates how this beak does its grisly work. Now this black beak is very hard and very sharp, and it makes bite-sized pieces of the prey and passes it down into the uh, esophagus. So this is a beak from a, a, a larger Humboldt squid. If you look closely on the, uh, the lower unit, you can see there's little uh, saw teeth on the edge, like a, much like a serrated knife. The top one seems to lack those serrations and is just very sharp like a razor, and together make lovely V-shaped bites of um, whatever gets into there. And powering this killing machine is a unique method of locomotion. Well, a squid or an octopus or any cephalopod swims the same way, and that's by jet propulsion. So basically, they're all just uh, like a muscular balloon. This is not a balloon, but it'll do. In fact, it looks a little more squid-like. Uh, it's a hollow sack where water goes in, and when the muscles squeeze, the water comes back out. The body is encased in a thick layer of skin called the mantle. Water circulates through the cavity between the mantle and the body's organs. If the uh, mantle squeezes just a little bit and puts water out slowly, uh, the squid will swim back and forth gently. If it releases it suddenly with a lot of power, you make an escape response, and about that same speed. So. Uh, that's the way it does it. It's a simple system, but jet propulsion creates enough thrust to launch this 140-pound torpedo of muscle through the water at 20 miles per hour. So, Humboldt squid are well-armed, jet-propelled predators. But are they man-eaters? There's one man who has experienced this squid's aggression more than any other. Underwater cameraman Scott Cassell. I prefer to dive with squid alone. And some people have uh, used the word crazy about that with me, but there is a, there's actually a method behind it, is that um, they are predators, but they're also prey. So really to get the effect of their true behavior, you have to look like prey. Diving alone in squid-infested seas is dangerous enough, let alone trying to look like a large fish, the Humboldt's normal prey. The secret to Scott's survival, unique body armor. Mankind seems to be able to get around dangerous animals by building technology. 
But when it comes right down to it, if a man is going to actually go head to head with an animal of equal size and weight, he's almost always going to lose. And we're in his environment now, wearing life support, we're swimming. We swim at about one and a half miles an hour with scuba. These animals swim 20 knots. You, know, you do the math, they, they hit you pretty hard. Scott worked with a Star Wars costume expert to design a lightweight suit of underwater armor. Chest plate's there to prevent a beak, because if a beak were to bite right here, it would actually possibly go right through a rib, open up your chest cavity, and seawater would rush in right around your lungs and your heart. And that makes me uncomfortable, so I developed the chest armor. Then the waist straps clip here. Well, as far as I know, this is the only purpose-built anti-squid suit in the world. Every night, the Humboldts are lured to the surface by the local fishermen. Scott dives under the fishing boats for a guaranteed close encounter. High-tech underwater diving gear eliminates the bubbles while he's filming. As well as armor, Scott makes sure a rope secures him to the boat so that he can't be whisked away by the strong current and so the squid can't pull him down into the depths. These precautions come from his hard-earned experience, and they work. He's done more dives with Humboldt than anyone else, and he's still here to tell the tale. But when Scott started out, he almost paid a very high price for his fascination with the squid. My very first time I dove with a Humboldt squid, another squid came in and hit me, hit the front of the camera and the camera hit me in the face as hard as a man with a baseball bat, and I saw stars. And just as that guy hit me in the face, another one came down and hit me on the legs and dragged me down from 40 feet to 70 feet, faster than I could equalize my ears, and I ruptured my right eardrum. Out of the darkness, more and more squid appear. They flash dramatically as their behavior becomes more menacing. But then, instead of attacking Scott, they start to attack each other. Scott's quest to film the squid close up has ended in a cannibalistic feeding frenzy, more fuel for their bloodthirsty reputation. Jackie has seen this happen too. Well, I seen a Humboldt attack another Humboldt where it took him about you know, maybe eight or nine seconds to actually use his beak and decapitate the other squid. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's a pretty amazing demonstration of just, you know, what an incredible eating machine they can be. These squid are clearly cannibals, but what causes this behavior? The answer may well lie in an amazing aspect of the squid's life cycle. Squid, as far as we know, only live about a year, and um, they have a tremendous rate of growth. Uh, they eat 10 or 15 percent of their body weight every day. So for this squid to grow from a tenth of a gram to 50 kilograms in a year uh, would be something like a human growing from average size of maybe uh, 10 pounds, that's a little bigger than an average, but to something the size of a blue whale in a year. So Humboldts live fast and die young. Is it their single-minded quest to eat and grow that lies behind their deadly reputation? Is this why Humboldt squid attack anything that moves, including humans? Or is there a simpler explanation? In order to investigate further, Mike and Jackie plan their next dive trip. The easiest way to track the elusive Humboldts is to follow the fishermen. And this is exactly what Mike and Jackie intend to do as they prepare for their next dive into the Sea of Cortez. It's evening and the squid fishing boats head out to sea. They specialize in catching Humboldts, using hand lines rigged with hooked lures called jigs.
Once they've got a bite, the real hard work begins. From the first tug, the fisherman needs to work fast to drag up the struggling squid. As the Humboldts begin to attack each other, hauling up the catch becomes a risky business. The moments just before they're hauled on deck are the most dangerous. Get thrown off balance when you're knee deep in ink, seawater and blood, and suddenly you're overboard and in the center of the Humboldt's feeding frenzy. Jigging for squid is certainly dangerous, but it's also incredibly effective. This is a Humboldt squid jig. There's lead on the end. I'll get to these in a minute. This is a luminescent member. It's a, it's a, you shine a light on it and it glows. And then this is just hardware to attach it to a hand line. This is the business end here. And these things are non-barbed. They're just a whole bunch of backward facing needles. And it's absolutely impossible for that squid to get off it. This thing hangs vertically in the water column. It's attracted to this glowing bit here, and it shoots out its tentacles, grabs it, and these guys are jigging. That's the act of moving it up and down. And these needle-sharp pins and nails get hooked onto the tentacles of the squid, the arms, and it's impossible to get off. Imagine if this were attached to you, and you were brought up by this. I mean, 50 holes puncturing your skin and dragging up, you're fighting against it. And the harder you pull, the more caught you are on this lure. And finally, you break through the surface. I mean, it's no small wonder the squid are pissed off when they get to the surface after being dragged up by this thing. These are big, strong animals. Commercial fishermen fight hard to catch them, and the squid fight back. They desperately squirt ink as a last line of defense. Normally, the ink provides a smoke screen, allowing the animal to make a quick getaway. But once caught on a jig like this, there's no chance of escape. The fishermen receive a face full of spray like a fireman's hose. This jet is the Humboldt's last desperate effort to survive. Having tracked the fishing fleet right into the heart of squid-infested waters, Mike and Jackie drop anchor and prepare to descend into the unknown. They hope to shed light on what causes the squid's aggression toward one another and toward people. You ever get spooked diving at night? Mm, I don't know, there's that just a split second before you get in when it's absolutely pitch black and you can't see anything. And you know you're just diving in the middle of nowhere. Surrounded by fishermen hauling up their catch, Mike and Jackie know squid must be all around. This hooked squid struggles on the jig. Others tear it apart. They're all flashing red and white. How and why do the squid change color so dramatically? The flashing is caused by the Humboldt's skin pigment switching from white to red. This makes them appear to vanish because light reflects off white and water filters out the darker red. These color changes are produced by unique organs called chromatophores. Chromatophores are marvelous uh, neuromuscular organs that are bags of pigment, basically, that can open and close under control of the brain. Uh, imagine this is the bag of pigment looking down at the squid skin. When, this, when, the pig, when the bag is closed, you don't see very much. 
when it's open, you see a nice pixel or spot of color, and the squid can change that uh, under control of the brain, just like my fingers are working this one. If I try to do multiple ones, now I can begin to make patterns. You can get an idea of what the squid is doing when it's controlling two million of these. I can only do two, but the squid uh, may have two million or ten million chromatophores in the size of a Humboldt squid, because it's a marvelous behavior and a beautiful one. All squid have the remarkable ability to change their colors instantaneously and make patterns on their skin. Mike Degree has filmed this extraordinary behavior in the Humboldt's smaller relatives, the Caribbean reef squid. He sees this as vivid proof that they do communicate. Not only do they have the ability to change color and in some instances change shape, but their body postures change. Some of the squid, and certainly cuttlefish, will face one another head on and raise a couple of arms up. And there's two of them looking right at one another with these raised arms. And then one of them will drop the arm, spread them out like this. What is going on? They must be communicating at some level. Humboldt squid only flash red and white, but even this simple pattern sends a clear message. Whether they're attacking or being attacked, it seems to mean anger, fear, or panic. Fortunately, the agitated Humboldts aren't attacking Mike and Jackie, who managed to free one lucky squid, which jets off into the sanctuary of deeper water. Then Mike boards one of the boats for a closer look at the fate of the killer squid. I have to say, this is breaking my heart. I don't like being in a fishing boat watching these incredible animals being hauled up like this. I don't like this at all. It's an incredibly sad ending for a once majestic beast, but at least out on the fishing boats, it gives us an idea of what these things look like. You can tell why they're so powerful. Probably 2,000 or so of these are captured each night in the fishing industry. The whole boat behind me is filled with squid. That's it. Under the fishing boats, Mike and Jackie confirmed that Humboldts are cannibals, although the squid weren't aggressive toward them. They also believe that flashing red isn't necessarily just an attack warning. It seems it's a more complex communication. The question is, is their urge to kill and eat each other triggered by a need to eat anything that moves, or by the carnage all around? Would the squid behave differently without the stress of hunting? As Mike and Jackie prepare for their final dive trip, what can they learn from encounters with squid away from fishing boats? Professor Gilly found out firsthand. Several years ago, during a squid tagging project with Stanford University, Bill Gilly had the chance to swim with Humboldts. There were no fishing boats around. Like everyone else, he was wary, but what he saw that day changed the way he thought about these animals forever. Well, I was underwater, so it just felt like a very gentle sort of caress almost, just such a gentle, gentle pat, and then the squid went away, and other ones came up and did the same thing, so it was sort of a, it seemed almost like a ritual of the squid to come up and touch and go back. It was, it was very odd. It made me feel like I was in outer space, uh, shaking hands with E.T. or something. You see these pulsating white big squid and they come up and look them in the eye and um, have them touch you. It, it made me feel uh, wonderful. It was an amazing experience. Curious, gentle, inquisitive. This doesn't fit the stereotype of a mindless programmed killer. And other personal encounters with Humboldts reveal a surprising layer of sophistication. One of the reasons that I think Humboldt squid are intelligent, as intelligent as dogs, say, for example, is um, the way that they look at you and they assess you. And I've never seen any other animal underwater that takes the time to swim around you and look at you. It's very spooky. It's really unnerving. Scott Cassell has observed even more subtle displays of intelligence. I remember when I was uh, diving with them inside of a shark cage because we saw a very large squid and I wanted the safety of a cage until I explored them. 
one squid came up to the cage and started to touch the latch and actually started to play with the thing. And of all the parts of the cage, why did he choose the latch? It was the same squid that was hanging around when I got in the cage in the first place. So you can't help but wonder what's going on there. If the animal was actually, was he trying to open the door? I think they're very intelligent. Understanding, problem solving. What else could the Humboldt be capable of? Making mischief? The thing that made me the most indignant when I had an encounter with a Humboldt squid was when one had the temerity to take something out of my pocket. I couldn't believe it. While I was distracted, I saw something going on out the corner of my eye. And the squid was here by my side and just kind of reached into my pocket. He saw my lens cap that he liked the look of and just disappeared with it. And I, I was, I couldn't believe it. Oh, I was so mad that day, and um, I don't know what he did with it. I can't say that it'd make a tasty snack. Surprising levels of intelligent behavior, including trickery, have been observed in other cephalopods, especially octopus. Perhaps we've underestimated the squid's minds, too. Jackie has even seen Humboldt squid seeming to work as a group. She was the first ever to watch them hunting shoals of small crustaceans called krill. I've seen that I don't think anybody else has uh, managed to film is Humboldt squid feeding on krill. There were hundreds of them and they were all around us and the krill storm was massive. I mean it just blocked out all your dive lights. Just this beautiful pure white. It was almost like ballet. swimming in and out, opening their tentacles and grabbing the krill and bringing it towards them and feeding on it. And it was really interesting because they were curious about us and they were using our lights to fish by. They were in no way aggressive and it was such a different experience to being underneath the fishing boats. It was amazing. This extraordinary footage shows the squid in a completely different light. By hunting in a pack, the Humboldts can herd the krill together. Perhaps the squid are cooperating, something never before observed in cephalopods. So, squid aren't just lethal weapons and a bad attitude. They're intelligent and sophisticated animals who communicate with each other using a complex, subtle, and beautiful body language. Perhaps the damage to Eric was not caused by aggression, but by curiosity. Mike and Jackie need to do a final dive. They want to get far away from the fishing boats to see how the Humboldts behave when they're not being jigged. Will they leave the divers alone, or will they attack? Back aboard the Mary Lee, the dive team head out once more into the Sea of Cortez. The sonar homes in on a large shoal of Humboldt squid over a thousand feet below. Matte box shadow on there. They're just beginning their slow ascent to shallower water to feed. Mike and Jackie get ready. Can't wait to get in, how about you? The fishermen know the Mary Lee is sonar equipped, so now they're following Mike and Jackie. Soon, they're completely surrounded. I was talking to this guy, the fisherman on the dock earlier. I told him what we were doing. And he was just like, you must be crazy. Are you serious? Really? They're so dangerous. They were, they're amazing. They're so scared of them. And they, they've all got a fantastic story to tell about you know, how their, their brother-in-law fell in and was eaten and all sorts of stuff. But you don't know, really. You've heard that from more than one. Yeah, but you don't know, really, whether it's true or not. Because the locals only encounter Humboldts while fishing, they're unaware of the squid's more sensitive side. 
but Mike and Jackie are banking on it. They're eager to prove that away from fishing boats, Humboldts are anything but man-eaters. They get ready to rendezvous with the squid. Well, this time of day is one of my favorites. You know, the change over time in the reef where the daytime fish and creatures are kind of sleeping down, finding a place to go to bed. Yeah. Nighttime guys are just waking up and coming up, so it's very confused. And predators often really take advantage of that. Humboldts are such successful predators that there are often fewer sharks around where there are squid. The Humboldt are beginning their ascent to shallower feeding waters. Think of what these things are going through. They're starting out at what? 800, 1,000 feet. Yeah. And now, right now, they're leaving that bottom, yeah. moving up the slope, yeah. up into the shallow waters. Yeah. That's a long way to go. Yeah. If we can just do nothing, sit, sit and wait, wait yeah. and hope yeah. Yeah. that one over two of them yeah. will get curious, we're going to see something yeah. very different yeah. than anything I've yeah. ever seen with the Humboldt. Mike and Jackie can't be certain that they'll see natural behavior because nearby fishermen could trigger aggression. In order to shake off the fleet, they must swim further out to sea and dive much deeper than originally planned. Dangerous extra risks. How will the squid react? Will they really behave any differently away from jigs and lures? Will they attack each other or Mike and Jackie? The dive team need to get down deep where there's less light and lure the squid toward them. Light sticks contain phosphorescent chemicals activated when the tube is snapped. Got to go a little deeper. Yeah. We're going to probably drop down to 85 and stop there. Conditions are good, all's well, except no squid. That's 85. With the lures activated, all Jackie and Mike can do is wait. They're in the middle of the Sea of Cortez, a hundred feet of water overhead and more than two miles below them. The squid could be anywhere. Well, it's getting dark enough now so they should see these things. Yeah, you think so. You know, it's hard for me to believe that they're not down here, out in the periphery, just yeah. kind of watching us, waiting. Yeah. They must know that we're here. I know, I'm sure that they know we're here. You kind of have to watch all around, don't you? Well, I've never had to wait this long for Humboldt squid before. Oh, really? Then, they spot something strange. Oh my God, look at that. Looks like squidding to me. No, no, that, I'm not sure that Have is. the squid already been and gone? Too, too oh. viscous. They're like been on a moon mission or something. <laughs> But their deep, dark vigil is about to pay off. Finally, Mike and Jackie's efforts are rewarded. The squid show up. OK, I see a squid. I got squid action. Oh, come on. Oh, there he is. He's just below me. See him, Mike? No, I don't. Is it a big one? Bigger than me. Is that big? Bigger than you. Yeah, that's big. <laughs> Yeah, here it comes! Oh, oh yeah, here yeah, they come! Here they come! Okay, it's half... Five, six of them! They're so beautiful, and they're all around us now. Oh, my God. As the squids circle Mike and Jackie, there's no real sign of aggression. But they are flashing. What are they communicating? Oh, come on up, guys. Oh, here's one level with us. They didn't just come piling in, they're actually really checking us out. Yeah, they are. The squid seem to be very curious about the divers. They come in for a good look and then jet off. Here, one minute, gone another. Oh, 
her, look at him go. Wow. But as suddenly as they appeared, the squid are gone. With air in short supply and no sign of another squid appearance, Mike and Jackie head back to the surface, unharmed and exhilarated. Ah. Sea of Cortez. Sea of Cortez. Yeah, <laughs> she won't let you down, will she? You could really tell, especially the one on, at the end on the safety stop. You were facing the other way, but I could see him just, and he just was looking and looking and looking to see what we were, you know. And then you turned round and he just took yeah. off. I never saw red either. No. They were just flashing nice, subtle shades of white and gray. Always before, just like you. I've yeah. seen them rush in, yeah. flashing white to yeah. red, yeah. white to red, exactly. white to red. Yeah. That wasn't, I didn't see any of that. Everything Mike and Jackie heard about the Humboldt squid said it was a relentless and indiscriminate predator, a man killer. But all this information came from observations made under fishing boats. Their last dive, in more natural surroundings, told a very different story. As with the krill hunt, these squid showed a completely different side. They weren't bloodthirsty. They were peaceful and inquisitive. You can't call that aggression. I mean, it's just part of the deal. It's you chum a bunch of sharks around and jump off the back of the boat. You might get bitten. Is that the shark's fault? No. It's just because you've created a scenario and then jumped into an artificially induced situation and, well, you know, there, there's no reliability any, anymore. There's no consistency. Who knows what's going to happen? Hopefully nothing. I'm more convinced than ever that the reason that all this cannibalistic, aggressive behavior is going on is, is to do with them being fished. I mean, it's horrendous atmosphere. There are hundreds of these animals being pulled out of the water every night. It's just, it's just death and destruction everywhere. So um, I'm definitely more convinced that we will find um, Humboldt squid behaving in a passive way in other places, not all attacking each other. They seem to be a lot more curious, intelligent, and uh, very docile, actually, if you deal with them properly. If you fight with them, they'll fight back. But if you uh, are kind to them, they are very kind to you. Even Scott Cassell, with many Humboldt dives behind him, realizes he has witnessed only a small part of this creature's behavior. Like a kid in a candy store, I can't seem to get enough of these animals, hence the fact that I've dove with them 175 times. And even with that many dives, I feel like I'm just scratching the tip of the iceberg. There's no question Humboldt squid are powerful, intelligent, and deadly predators. Strong enough to pull a scuba diver or a fisherman to a watery grave. But this doesn't make them man-eaters. Hundreds of Humboldts are hauled out of the water every night on needle jigs. The squid fight for survival. Surrounded by blood and injured animals, they turn on each other and any humans who happen to be there. They're driven by a need to eat as much as possible in order to grow quickly during their short lives. But away from the carnage of the fishing fleet, the squid feed naturally. Efficient and well-designed predators, there's no need for them to attack each other or people. So, the Humboldt squid, a modern-day sea monster, or just elusive and misunderstood. The Humboldts aren't out to get us. They're intelligent animals reacting to extreme provocation. We now know that the stories about killer squid are wrong.